Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Satyajit Tharat. We are going to discuss, as we do on Monday, the COVID nineteen epidemic, pandemic, whatever we want to call it, its progression as we see it even now with increased numbers of vaccines being given, both in India and in a number of other countries. So, of course, it is still very meager in, for instance, in Africa, lots of other places, including large parts of India. So we are not out of the woods. The government recently has said that certain northeastern states' numbers are increasing rapidly, but they've also said, and of course it doesn't correlate to this, that the R numbers, the reproduction rate of the infection is also increasing. It has come now from X, I think 0.7 something as it had been brought down to, it's now 0.88. If it goes above one, as you know, it will start increasing rapidly. Satyajit, what do we have to say about these numbers? Because if you see, look at the new, uh, these, these numbers the government is talking about and what is happening on the ground. We see actually the numbers which are rising in terms of what is the R numbers are really old places, not Northeast, which is a very small contribution, but really places like Maharashtra, Pune, for example, Tiruvarandapuram uh, in Kerala, for example. So you know, the correlation is really not Northeast and R. It's really something else, isn't it? Well, it's a number of things. So the first thing that we have to uh, keep in mind that any plain assertion that our numbers are right has to be treated with a dose of healthy skepticism. Mm, with, with matters like this where we don't have universal data, where everything is based on sampling, the bald-faced claim that our numbers are right simply cannot be made. All of us have to be cautious and careful about the many possible confoundings, the many possible difficulties with how the sampling is done and therefore what the data do and don't represent. That said, let's look at two or three issues. Firstly, after a period of weeks, months almost, of fairly stringent draconian lockdown. Over the past few weeks, we have been variously emerging from lockdown. We have doing, we've been doing what everybody is referring to as the unlockdown. Um, and it's unsurprising that in this phase, we have an upsurge of what's called COVID inappropriate behavior. We have people who've been anxious going out and feeling de-repressed and therefore um, crowding, therefore um, not necessarily masking as well as they should and so on and so forth. And there are two components to this. One is, as we've been saying consistently, community participation where citizens and communities are active decision-making partners in epidemic control policies have been conspicuously lacking for the past year. And therefore, a general law and order kind of lockdown, when it is lifted, is almost certain to give rise to COVID inappropriate behavior. While I am not denying that citizens um, are certainly responsible for the behavior, the role of government, of governance and of policies in leaving this lacuna where um, community participation and partnership in epidemic control policies uh, has not been taken on board cannot be denied. That's one issue. A second issue is that we need to keep in mind that there are far more transmissible variants around today. Um, there is alpha, there is beta, there is delta, there are, there are other uh, variants that are beginning to crop up, all of which, as we keep pointing out, 
are characterized by the ability to be transmitted more efficiently. What exactly the mechanisms of that more efficient transmission are is a matter of detailed biology. But the fact is that they are all capable of being transmitted more efficiently. What that means is that even one step lowering of the COVID appropriate behavior guard is likely to lead to much greater spread this year than it would have done last year. That's an unfortunate fact of biological life. And again, because we haven't been treating communities as partners, this, I don't think, has been assimilated by communities to the extent that it needed to have been. A third factor in this is that we have been, and in all of these criticisms, I don't mean to criticize only the government of India, because to a greater or lesser extent, governments across the world, and certainly state governments and the union government included in India, have uh, um, been remiss in many of these matters. But both the government of India and governments across the world have been triumphalist in the interpretation of their vaccination coverage so far. They've been converting from putting their best foot forward optimistically in vaccination policies and strategies to pretending that there is much more better and more uniform vaccination than is really the case. And as a result, there is a great deal of excessive expectation of vaccination mediated protection in communities that's actually not supported by reality. And all of these factors put together are beginning to have their effects. And the effects are threefold. Firstly, as you point out, there are um, 10, 15 percent of the districts across the country where cases have never really come down. They've, they've plateaued but not come down. They've gone up. They've kept going up. Many of these are in the Northeast and the union government keeps pointing out that those are small numbers and so on and so forth. And I'm unwilling to acknowledge the issue of small numbers if in geographical, socio-geographical areas, the epidemic is continuing to smolder unchecked. That's a global problem. That's not just a local problem and it can't be dismissed simply as a matter of small numbers. The second issue is that we now have, compared to last year, a far more decentralized epidemic transmission. We have not just urban India, we have rural India, we have very widespread pockets of smoldering infection. And as a result, with more transmissible variants, with emerging COVID inappropriate behavior, the likelihood of local outbreaks is quite substantial. And I don't think any of this is being taken either by communities or by governments as uh, seriously as we should be taking them. You know, of course, as you know, there was also the proposal for a Char Dham Yatra in Uttarakhand after what we saw in the uh, Kumbh Mela. So now hopefully it will not take place. Hopefully, let's see what, what happens really. But obviously, the COVID inappropriate behavior is not only the people, but it's also the governments, as we saw earlier. You have also talked about the vaccine part. Now here is the Indian vaccine rate is relatively still in terms of what needs to be done, no, and also very patchy. It's there in certain pockets. It's not there in other pockets. It shoots up when the government wants to create an atmosphere that suddenly ramped up because central government is taken over by essentially holding vaccines and then shooting it off one particular day to create, create a large number, then falling off again. Reality is that two shots small number still in percentage terms and a single shot not adequate at the moment as it seems even that number is not very large so if we look at it the vaccine issue also is going to uh, bite us uh, at the moment because unless we spend at least another six to nine months vaccinating the people 
and really getting about 70 to 80 to 75 percent of the people vaccinated, we are not going to see that as a major contributor to lowering the numbers. And if we look at what we are seeing in terms of the vaccine production, we are not seeing the spike the government had, pro had promised. Maybe we'll take that up another day. What are the detailed vaccines that are coming out, supposed to be coming out, where they are in the production stage, how much has been the production, uh, how much production has been ramped up. That's a different issue. But you did talk about the other issue, that even in countries which have relatively more uh, stronger vaccine programs, like it is said, the European Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States, there is still patchy because a large number of people who have not been vaccinated were not even being counted because they're supposed to be illegal immigrants. And they are now acting as large vectors or reservoirs of people who are completely unprotected and therefore right for uh, the vaccine for the virus to spread. So absolutely, the fundamental, completely unsurprising and de depressing truth is that existing inequities are exacerbated in epidemic times. They are exacerbated because people are not counted, as you point out. They are exacerbated because marginalized communities are correctly skeptical of the state and therefore show vaccine hesitancy that is derived from a completely different source than that in um, affluent anti-science communities. Um, and because their vaccine supply and their vaccine delivery systems are much less reliable and far more patchy. And therefore, single dose vaccination is likely to be far more common amongst those communities, the marginalized, the undocumented, the disempowered communities. And as we pointed out, the emerging more transmissible variants, even though single doses might well provide for protection against severe illness and death, do not provide for particularly good protection against infection and transmission. And all of this together is creating what we said a few months ago as the situation where there are large communities in which the virus is spreading, abutting vaccinated communities in which virus variants that are being generated in this pool are being tested against the vaccinated uh, communities, so to say. We are inviting the emergence of true vac vaccine escape variants as a consequence of iniquitous vaccination. Well, that's an interesting point because what we then seem to be inviting, as you were saying, is that a condition where vac the viruses or the virus strains will emerge, which will defeat the vaccines at least to some extent. And therefore, it will also show that we need a new generation of vaccines. Already there talk about third dose uh, of vaccine in the United States. In Israel, they, have, they are arguing that they need a third dose. All this is already happening. So back to the old formulation, which you have said, either everybody wins or all of us lose. That's the unfortunate uh, maxim that we have to follow, which unfortunately the rich, both in terms of countries and the people don't seem to be uh, following. Satyajit, while all this is true, what you said, there is also the other part of it, both in the United States and the United Kingdom, which we seem to know more about because of our colonial past and English being the, the language which is common to the educated elite in India, as well as uh, the whatever we call them in the uh, ex-colonial or settled colonial states of the uh, United States and the United Kingdom. The, there is now from both the government and including the CDC, the argument that people who have been vaccinated have to see two shots, don't have to wear masks. What does it actually indicate? Because don't you think that 
asking some people to wear masks, not others, in fact, is in going to invite a more COVID inappropriate behavior by everybody. Um, I must confess that while I see the so-called scientific rationale in the sense simply that the vaccinated are much less likely to be uh, productively infected, I am deeply, deeply skeptical of this advice for withdrawing completely from epidemic appropriate behavior. It is one thing to begin to um, open up um, both the economy and the and, and 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 culture at large. It is another to begin to create a situation where there are two classes of people: the vaccinated who have privileges that the unvaccinated don't. This is particularly important because the unvaccinated are not at all necessarily unvaccinated by choice, especially they are not necessarily unvaccinated as a result of some uh, anti-science, anti-vaxxer perspective, but simply as a consequence of not having had access, not having had structure, not having had opportunity, or being justly suspicious of the state. Under these circumstances, to create effectively two classes of privileges is an invitation to worsening inequities. I think it is therefore deeply improper for such advice to include this complete opening up. I can imagine that under some very restrictive and specific circumstances, a, a, a permission for the vaccinated and not for the unvaccinated, um, such as Wimbledon uh, tennis tournaments, such as uh, uh, football matches, all of this I say with uh, less than serious tone. Um, but I can imagine that there are situations where one might allow a vaccination certificate to give some small privilege. But these are policies that need to be extremely careful, extremely graded, extremely specific and extremely nuanced if they are not to translate into massive exacerbated inequities which we might start to see in the United States and the United Kingdom again, because it does seem the numbers are going up again over there. And we know that successive COVID infections do take place if there's a gap of six to eight months and if there's a new variant. So given that, what you are saying is that, of course, we are still talking about countries who have vaccines. Uh, there is in Africa, large parts of Asia, large parts of Latin America, we still don't have vaccines for majority of its people. So this is perhaps not the signal that we should be discussing here. But the reason of discussing is, unfortunately, what we see in the United States and the United Kingdom, particularly in countries like India and the elite in India, that we try to follow them. And this is therefore something which can have dangerous consequences in India as well. Thank you very much, Satyajit, for being with us, sharing with us, as usual, your insights into a rather complex and difficult problem, because it's not a problem of science, not a problem of biology. It's a problem of also society and, of course, ultimate issue, which is all what seems to be what the ruling parties, governments, classes look for, the question of money. Who benefits, who loses? This is all the time we have for NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick and do visit our website.